Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa with me, Ellen Gainsford. Tonight, as the COVID-19 pandemic spreads rapidly across Africa, at least 73 people have died from the virus on the continent. The World Health Organization warns the window to contain the outbreak is narrowing every day. And Mali gears up for elections this weekend, despite the coronavirus crisis and the kidnapping of the head of the opposition, Soumaila Sissé. The country is now under curfew, part of emergency measures to deal with the pandemic. There are now over 3,000 cases of the coronavirus across Africa. 46 of the continent's 54 countries have confirmed cases of the virus. Our correspondent in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Clement Bonnero, has an exclusive interview with a leading virologist. Professor Jean-Jacques Moyembi was part of the team that first discovered Ebola in the 1970s. He explains how the lessons learned from the recent outbreak will be used to tackle COVID-19. I'm here at the National Institute of Biomedical Research in Kinshasa with Professor Jean-Jacques Mouyembe, who leads the response to COVID-19 here in the DRC. Professor Mouyembe, hello and welcome. Bonjour, monsieur. Professor Muyembe, several African countries, including the DRC, have implemented radical measures to stop the spread of the novel coronavirus. Some have closed their borders, others have suspended international and domestic flights. Are these measures enough? The most important for us is to prevent the most important thing for us is to prevent the spread of this disease in Africa because we do not have the required infrastructure to be able to treat the sick. We have to do everything we can to ensure that we do not end up with the kind of situation that you've seen in Europe, in China, and elsewhere around the world. Professor Muyembe, should even more restrictive measures be put in place, uh, such as confinement measures, curfews, similar to what's been done in Europe and Asia? The number one priority is to avoid overcrowding in the public space. We must educate people and teach them to keep their distance from each other. We're confident that with enough discipline and if a population follows the government's guidelines, then the epidemic will play out very differently from what we have seen in Europe and elsewhere. Many African countries have faced epidemics in recent years. Will this experience be useful in combating this new disease? We're better prepared to deal with this COVID-19 outbreak compared to countries that have never been hit by the Ebola outbreak, especially in the east of a country, in North Kivu, South Kivu and Ituri. The population there is very well prepared. And the same prevention measures for Ebola will also apply to COVID-19. What message would you like to send to African people and in particular Congolese people who are worried about their health? The population must be fully informed and there must be no doubt about the existence of this disease. COVID-19 is real. We must stand together and protect ourselves to protect others and bring this epidemic under control. Without discipline, there will be anarchy and then there will be carnage. The governor of Kinshasa has announced a four-day lockdown for the city starting on Saturday. After this, residents will be able to leave their homes for two days and that pattern of four days on, two off will repeat for three weeks. Now Zimbabwe's doctors and nurses are continuing to strike over a lack of protective equipment and water shortages, which they say will make tackling the coronavirus outbreak impossible. The country's health system is already under massive strain. There have been at least three recorded cases of the virus in Zimbabwe in less than a week and one death. Members of the Zimbabwe Hospital Doctors Association say they're ready to help fight the outbreak when their own safety is assured. Let's take a listen. Call for PPE 
uh, personal protective equipment, uh, whereby we are saying, us as the frontline uh, healthcare workers, uh, we need to be protected first. Uh, because there's a difference between heroism and uh, suicide. So for us, we need to be protected first so that we'll be able to help uh, all those. So we have said, um, uh, let PPEs be availed first, and then we'll be able to offer our services. As we speak, Harare Central Hospital is closed. It's locked because all the nurses decided to go and stay safe at home because there was no plan. There was no plan uh, as to where they are going to get face mask ETC. As soon as those donations or as, the, as soon as those personal protective equipment becomes available at the hospitals, and as soon as our safety as healthcare workers is guaranteed, we are ready to save the Zimbabwean population. We are ready to fight uh, this coronavirus. South Africa is gearing up for a three-week lockdown starting at midnight this Thursday. The country now has over 900 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. It's the worst hit nation on the continent. Nicolas Germain has this report on how South African businesses are preparing for the economic hit. Over the next three weeks, restaurants in South Africa will be like this one, empty. The government is imposing a 21-day lockdown. The country has the most coronavirus cases in Africa, more than 900. And restaurant owners fear the lockdown could be extended. On Saturday, we had uh, 227 customers, and on Monday, we had two. I mean, so it's not a, it's a, it's, 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 it's complete devastation because the business that we were running is all about social contact. Social distancing is the opposite of what we were offering. You know, if this is a three or four month lockdown, we, I mean, I, I shudder, I don't even want to start thinking about what those consequences are. It's just not feasible. President Cyril Ramaphosa has been praised for ordering some of the toughest measures on the continent, but small business owners are worried. The things that I have won't carry me through the through the whole uh, three uh, three weeks because I um, really I didn't see this disaster coming. I think two weeks max. That's that, that, that's the, the longest I, I, I can go, and then after that I'll, I really need to go underground and uh, really um, tighten up and uh, maybe get help from friends. The lockdown is expected to be especially difficult for the poorest South Africans who live in overcrowded townships. Mali has its first confirmed cases of COVID-19 after two people returning from France were found to have the virus. The country is closing its borders to prevent further spread. President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita has announced a curfew, but is insisting that elections planned for this weekend will still go ahead. Un couvre-feu est également décrété qui sera rigoureusement appliqué de 21h à 5h du matin. Ces élections se tiendront le 29 mars, c'est-à-dire ce dimanche, et ce, dans le respect scrupuleux des mesures barrières. Well, it's not just the coronavirus complicating the ballot. Mali's main opposition leader, Sumaila Sisi, and members of his campaign team have been taken hostage in the north of the country. The kidnapping hasn't been claimed, but the incident happened in an area controlled by extremist groups linked to al-Qaeda. Now to Tunisia, which is also under a strict lockdown. President Kais Saeed has deployed the army to make sure people respect the measures. As the elderly can be especially vulnerable to the virus, some Tunisians have joined community initiatives to help bring essential goods to their older neighbours during the shut-in. Our correspondent, Lilia Blaise, brings us this report. During a lockdown on non-essential outings, Bilal volunteered to help via a Facebook group. Thanks to donations, he's bringing needed goods to older people and the less able so they can avoid going out for chores. Once packages of goods are assembled, distribution begins. Even if Bilal takes all precautions, he still risks exposure to contamination. But he thinks his help is needed at this time when many Tunisians are in a precarious situation, barely enduring the economic burdens of lockdown. Mm -hmm. 
The government announced economic and social measures to help people suffering during the lockdown. But in the meantime, there's a need to educate people on the need to stay home, especially during the nightly curfew which starts at 6 p.m. when no one can go out. At curfew time, singer Nermin Svar gets ready and puts on makeup to go dance. In her living room, live via social media. والله انا حبيت نشجع الشعب التونسي باش يدار خاطر فما برشا ناس حتى كي ولاو يعملوا في السهريات في النهار والعباد تلم في النهار وكنا ما عملنا حتى شيء لذلك انا قلت ناس نعرف فيد وما تنجمش حصرت الدار قلت لهم شدوا دياركم انا شجعكم شدوا دياركم وانا كل ليله نحل لكم سهريه لايف كل ليله تسمع نتاع Every night Nermin's videos are watched by tens of thousands of viewers. She's become a phenomenon on social media and a daily cure for the psychological stresses of lockdown and pandemic. Now to other news. Somalia is getting a clean financial slate. The country's $5.2 billion debt will be reduced to about a tenth of that in the next three years. This after the IMF and the World Bank say the government has taken the necessary steps to be eligible for debt relief. It means that the authorities can access loans needed to improve services. After years of conflict, Somalia has recently been combating a locust invasion and floods and needs to strengthen its health system as it prepares to face the coronavirus. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for watching this edition of Eye on Africa. Stay with us as more international news coming up.